Little Friends Puppy Island is an adventure game developed by Big Blue Bubble and was just recently released on PC and Nintendo Switch. This game gives me serious Nintendo vibes where you can care for and take your little doggy pals out for walks in this adorable and relaxing game. And thank you so much to Wanacott Communications for providing me with a review code. They're also being super generous and are supplying me with one digital and one physical copy to give away. The physical copy will be in the US only, but the digital is worldwide, so check out the description below to see how you can enter that. So starting off with the story, you've agreed to house it for a friend who lives on an island and you've brought your dog with you, an adorable little husky. As you explore and take your dog for a walk, you'll discover there's much more to this island than first meets the eye, and even the potential for a little development. You'll also find a whole bunch of strays here, and with your friend's permission, you'll bring them back to the house to look after them. They kind of sell this as like some mystery island where dogs will suddenly appear, but I was kind of getting some serious like dumping ground for unwanted pet vibes. But anyway, so you'll explore the island with your puppy pals, uncover new locations, construct buildings, uncover paths, and that's pretty much the game in a nutshell. So the main elements that come together to make Little Friends Puppy Island is the ability to adopt and care for many different dogs, taking them out for walks, training them up, and constructing new paths and buildings. You'll start your game off with a husky, so no choice of breed for your first dog, which I did find to be a little disappointing, but as I later came to discover, that wouldn't really matter. There's about 9 breeds of dogs that you can find on this island, including pugs, dalmatians and bulldogs, and you'll be able to find these dogs while you're out on your walks. As you adopt these dogs, you'll bring them back to your garden, but you'll only be able to have 3 in there at any one time. And of those three, it will be the last three dogs that you either interacted with or have just recently adopted. So there's absolutely no choice. This was probably the one thing that I just straight up did not like about this game. I tried to stick to a few favourites so I could feel somewhat connected to these dogs, but as you assign them to construction or various other jobs, you kind of really lose that ability. So for this reason, I was just kind of cycling through dogs as mean as it sounds not really feeling attached to any of them, which at least for me, is the main reason that I would even play these types of games. Moving on, so just for those of you who might be curious, you can't enter the house, nor can you customise or upgrade your garden in any way. 95% of your time will be spent taking your dogs out for walks, but having this feature would have been nice. Starting off, you'll only have access to one area, being the forest that lies just beyond your friend's house, but as you progress, you'll unlock new areas, eventually having a total of six different locations to explore and walk your dogs. As you walk your dogs, you'll come across these obstacles of sorts, and this is where your dog's stats come in. Your dogs all have five abilities that can be trained up, including obedience and endurance. As you walk your dog, complete obstacles, avoid distractions, play fetch and more, you'll be able to level up your dogs in these abilities. As you come up to obstacles during your walks, your dogs will need to have a minimum level in some of these abilities in order to pass. If you do meet the requirements, a little mini game will occur where you'll have to finish it successfully to pass the obstacle. These mini games are incredibly easy and relatively quick. They'll include button mashing, balancing, eyeballing a jump, and so on. While you need to complete a lot of these obstacles, and quite often, I never really did get sick of them because they were super quick and super easy, but I can see where some people will get quite annoyed having to complete these over and over again. I am also found it frustrating when I couldn't actually do the obstacle because I didn't meet the requirements, and then I had to go back and focus on training up my dog a bit more. Leveling up these abilities will also provide other benefits such as increasing your dog's endurance so they can walk for longer without getting tired and how fast they can run. So as you explore, you'll communicate with your friend via text and you'll both kind of agree that there's an opportunity to build up a few things to improve the island. You'll begin by building a little shop store where you can purchase some toys and clothes for your dogs and then move on to build various other structures. 
The game will ultimately consist of you somehow getting the idea or being directed to build something. You'll find a good location, allocate some dogs to the construction, find materials around the area, complete the build and repeat. Every so often one of these builds will be to unlock a new path that will lead you to a new location. When I say it like that, it does sound a little bit boring, but honestly, I found it interesting to have new buildings, see what they offered, level up your dogs to explore new paths, find new locations, and just play out the story. The new buildings you'll make can give your dogs some jobs where they'll be able to supply you with a bit of an income, or they can offer a service such as training up your dogs for you. There is also a bit of a collectible side to this game where each area has some statues that are hidden in various locations for you to find and I actually quite really enjoyed finding all of them. In total it took me about 10 hours to not only finish but essentially 100% this game. I got all but one trophy and on that note if anybody knows how to activate DK mode please let me know. But yeah really not a long game. After you finish, you can continue to walk your dogs, level them up, dress them, and whatever else. But for me, I was completely done with the game as soon as the story finished. As someone who grew up playing Nintendogs on my Nintendo DS, I found this game to have a very nostalgic feel to it. The look of the game, the animations of the dogs eating and catching frisbees, all of it reminded me very fondly of Nintendogs, and for that reason, I did like the look of the game, even though I'd say the art style is more directed at kids. I did find the overall details in the areas a bit lacking. Even as you develop this island, you'll never encounter another human being, either managing one of the shops or walking their own dogs. You're very much alone on this island, and in this way, the areas feel very empty. I found the soundtracks to be decent, as I almost exclusively played this game just before I went to bed each night, so I found it to be very relaxing and pleasant. I did experience a few off things during my gameplay. Firstly, three times during my 10 hour playthrough, my game sort of froze, not letting me use any buttons and I had to reset, causing me to lose some progress. I also had a range of other graphical glitches like puppies walking in place and small things like that. So I wouldn't say anything really major and overall I did have a good experience but the game freezing did really frustrate me when I had to repeat things due to lost save data. So considering the content, the length of the gameplay and the performance of the game, is this game worth $70? No. Sorry but 100% no. If I had purchased this game for myself and paid full price, I would be disappointed. I can honestly say I enjoyed the game and I think it will appeal to many people, but charging nearly the same price as games that have complex gameplay and 70 odd hours of content just doesn't seem fair. I would have loved many additions to this game such as decorating the yard, being able to enter and decorate the house, having one or two dogs that are well and truly your dogs and then maybe adopting or fostering the other dogs that you care for. Having some humans around to run the shops or seeing other people walking their dogs, just these few little details would have greatly improved the game for me and made it worth that $70 price. Again, loved the game, I did enjoy playing it, but I just can't fathom why they set the price as they did. So honestly, all the more reason to enter the giveaway, details are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching my video, I hope it was somewhat helpful. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!